Today I'm going to make pasta for Jolie soup. So if anybody likes going to Olive Garden and having their pasta for Jolie soup, this is pretty much a knockoff. Um, I came up with it with some help with a couple different recipes. So what I've done here already before I started is I've browned about a pound of extra lean ground beef. I'm using this little tool, tool here called the mix and chop, um, which you can buy through Pampered Chef, which is on my website. So if you're interested in that, it's great because it actually breaks up all of the hamburger and it makes it um, very crumbled. Um, you can do this recipe with chicken, ground chicken, or ground turkey, um, whatever you like. Um, the traditional recipe is actually with beef. So now that this is all done, I'm going to throw in my celery because I want it to cook down a little bit. And I'm using three to four stalks that have been chopped. Um, my sous chef, Sean, used the food chopper to chop that up. And I'm going to mix that in there because I want it to cook down. And then the next thing I'm going to put in is carrots. I kind of have a little trick with carrots. Um, I usually buy the shredded ones and then use a food chopper on them so I don't have to chop up the normal ones. You could do it with regular carrots. You could do it with baby carrots. Um, I just like either buying the baby carrots or the shredded carrots because I don't have to peel them. I got to do all that stuff so much when I was a kid. I get kind of lazy as an adult. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to saute it down a little bit. And once I see that this is starting to cook down, um, we've also chopped up a medium onion. This one was a little bit bigger than a medium onion. I like onions, so I'm going to throw it all in. If you don't, use a very small onion. Chop it up very finely, and it's going to kind of disappear into this once it starts cooking down. So I'm just going to let this cook down a little bit because the onions are going to take a lot less time to cook down than the uh, celery and the onions. Those have been in there probably a good minute. I'm going to let them sit there for another minute or so before I do that. So some of the other things that I'm using in this recipe is I'm going to have um, two cans of kidney beans. Um, they've been drained. Um, I use a uh, Pamper Chef Smooth Edge um, can opener so there aren't any jagged edges. It's a very nice um, piece of equipment to have. And then um, when you drain this, anytime you use canned beans, you want to make sure that you are going to rinse them many times. The more fluid, packing fluid, you get off of them, um, the more salt gets removed. Because even in the low salt, they still have to put a little bit of salt in there. I'm going to use two cans of chopped tomatoes. Don't drain those, you want the liquid that's in them. And then a can of tomato sauce, just plain tomato sauce. I like to use the uh, low sodium. And the reason why I try to use low sodium in everything is so that I can control the amount of salt that I put in. Um, especially if you have to be on a low salt diet, then it, it helps a lot. So I think this is ready to put my onions in. I'm gonna mix that in here too. And I just kind of really want to cook this down a little bit. So I'm gonna cook it for another two minutes or so. Let it cook down. So we have the hamburger mixed in with the Holy Trinity. Now I will say if you don't use really extra lean ground beef, you're using like an 80-20, you might want to drain some of the fat off before you start putting in the celery and the carrots. Um, with the extra lean, because this is 96% lean, there isn't, a very, there isn't very much oil that comes out of the meat. So it's not really greasy. So I'm going to let this cook down a little bit. Once this is cooked down, I'm going to pretty much add everything except for um, the pasta. The uh, dilatini pasta is a small little round pasta. Um, it just looks like the elbows that have been cut off, basically, and um, chopped up. About a cup of that I'm going to use. And this little um, doodad is called the measure all cup. Um, you can do dry on this end and wet on this end, and it kind of gives you all the measurements that are in there. It's pretty nifty. So I see that my onions are starting to sweat right now. Now I'm going to put in my garlic. I have three cloves of garlic. Again, I use the pre-chopped stuff, so I put a little bit more in. I like garlic. If you like garlic, you can always add more. This is going to be boiled for a little while, so it's not going to, you're not going to get a huge garlic presence, even if you put a little bit more in. So I'm going to mix that up until I can kind of smell the garlic. 
I just want it to warm up. And I'm getting it nice and mixed up in there. All right, so once that's all in there, then I'm gonna start adding all of the ingredients in. I'm also using eight cups of beef broth. So these little containers, these boxes, are about four cups, so I'm using two of them. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and put in, um, actually I'm gonna put the broth in first. I tend to like to put some of the water in first, so that way I don't squish the beans when I'm mis mixing them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, both of these in and I'm going to turn up to high because I want it to boil. And remember this is a soup. So this isn't like the chili we made a couple days ago where we barely want enough um, fluid over the beans and the other stuff that's in there. This is actually a soup so you want it soupy. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to get this to come to a boil. We're going to boil it for about 10 or 15 minutes. I have 15 minutes in the recipe. You could probably get away with 10. Because all you really want to do is mingle all those flavors together. And then we're going to wait to put in the pasta. Because it's going to take about 8 minutes for that pasta to cook. And you don't want to overdo the pasta, otherwise it's going to suck up all your fluid. So once um, we let it cook for the... Um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then we'll put the pasta in and we'll let it cook another eight minutes. So I'm gonna put my tomatoes in. There goes my second can. I'm just trying not to splash myself. And now I'm gonna put in my beans. Be careful here. That's two cans of beans. Get that all nice and mixed up. And you'll see there's lots of goodness in here. All right. And then I'm going to put in one can of tomato sauce. The tomato sauce is kind of give it its um, tomato base, and it's going to thicken up the sauce a little bit. And then the seasoning that I'm putting in, other than the garlic that I already put in, the fresh garlic, is some um, dried oregano. So I don't know if everyone is in the habit of using dried herbs. I like to use fresh herbs, but sometimes dried er herbs are um, what you go for. So this is about a teaspoon and a half. So I'm gonna put it in my hand, and then I'm gonna rub my hands together and kind of just Rub it together and get it in there. And what you're doing when you do that with dried herbs is you're releasing all the oils that are left in the dried leaves. And it's just going to open up the flavor when it gets mixed in to your soup. So anytime you deal with dried leaves, especially if you do um, every once in a while, like to do pasta with butter and um, dried basil, if you do that trick with the dried basil, it totally opens up that basil flavor. And we really want to get some of the oregano flavor in here. And that's part of the reason, the other part of the reason why you're letting it boil is because you want to infuse that into what's already in there. So I'm going to reserve my salt until it starts heating up. Um, a lot of times when you're making soups or you're making anything that needs to get heated, um, some of your flavors don't develop until it actually starts getting hot. So you could taste it while it's still kind of cold, but it's going to be hard to know whether or not it needs salt or not. The, uh, the last thing I'm going to put in here are a couple of dashes of Tabasco. What the Tabasco does is when you're actually eating the soup, at the front end you're going to taste um, your tomato base and your meat and stuff like that. And then at the very end you're going to feel a little bit of heat. And that's from the taba putting the Tabasco in there. Again, Danielle is kind of a wimp for this, so I don't put a whole lot in here. I have three or four dashes. If you like spicy, you can put more in. But just like with the chili, don't put too much in in the beginning. It's good just to put a, a little bit in at the beginning. Let it heat up and start boiling. Then taste it, see where it's at, and adjust it accordingly for your own taste or your family's taste. Did you hand me the lid? 
All right, so this is going to come to a boil, and I'm probably going to shorten this up as soon as it comes to a boil. But the other thing I wanted to give you guys a little tutorial on is garlic bread. So this is really good. You know, you think about going to um, Olive Garden and you get breadsticks. Those breadsticks are kind of doughy to me. I really like sourdough bread, so I'd way prefer to have my own um, bread. So I have some bread here my sous chef has already cut up. So we basically got a loaf over at Trader Joe's, and there's some bread on, on a pan here. And I'm going to put my oven on broil, which means that my rack is up on the top. And anytime you turn your oven on broil, you need to leave it cracked. You shouldn't shut the door. So I'm going to broil this. And what I did was, is I took some butter. Ooh, going to have to put it in the microwave again for a sec. Well, please. I actually had melted it. You want it kind of soft, otherwise you can't brush it on. So what I'm using is I'm using a silicone brush. And I'm going to brush some of that warm butter onto the bread. That way you don't oversaturate the bread with butter. I know butter tastes great. Everybody likes butter. Um, but you don't want to overpower it. So if you take the brush, you can just kind of brush it on. And it can be softened. It doesn't necessarily have to be like totally melted butter. But you go ahead and you just kind of put that all on there. I'm going to do these really quick here. And these silicone brushes work great because they wash up really nicely. You can put them in the dishwasher. Um, they don't hold on to the grease. It's great. So I have a little trick with my garlic bread. Just try to get as much of the, the bread that's exposed with that butter on it. And then I use some granulated garlic. Um, any brand is is good and I'm just gonna sprinkle that on you can do it right out of your container if you want and that's gonna give it some garlic flavor and you can use fresh garlic too um, if you have a garlic roaster um, I had a friend down in Southern California Christine her and her husband have this amazing thing that like roast garlic and you can pull it right out of this thing and spread it right on the bread it was like the best garlic bread I ever had in my life I also have some garlic salt so for me I like a little bit of a salt flavor when I'm eating my garlic bread so I'm gonna put just a little bit of this on here and this is all underneath the gooey layer of cheese that I'm gonna put on so even if some of you that can't have real cheese I know you can eat Parmesan and that's what I'm gonna do so if you have a microplaner grater, which you can get through Pampered Chef too, or you can use the kind that I showed you before. This is fresh grated Parmesan cheese. I spread that right on top. This is going to crisp up and bubble up, and it's going to be so good, especially with a little bit of garlic and uh, the little bit of salt that you put on there. It really tastes fantastic. See, and then whatever cheese you have left in here, guess what you can put it on? Your pasta for jolly. So my bread's all ready. Looks like my oven's all ready. So this you really want to take um, special care with and pay attention to it because you don't want it to burn. Some people, depending upon your ovens, you might have to put it in one side and turn it around and put it in the other side. Um, just depends on your own oven. So I'm just going to stick that in there. And it's probably not going to take very long. We're gonna let that brown up. And this is almost coming to its boil. I can see it coming up here. It's funny, I can smell garlic and I can smell Parmesan cheese and I can smell the soup. Mostly because I have it all over my hands right now. So once this comes to a boil, you want to let it boil for, like I said, um, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. After it's boiled for that long, then go ahead and put the pasta in. That's your cup of dilatini pasta. Let it boil for another eight minutes, and that will cook the pasta, and then you're ready to serve. 
Um, occasionally when I reheat this, sometimes I put a little extra um, beef broth in it because the dilatinia will continue to absorb the liquid with it and um, it can make less liquid in it and make it more of a stew rather than a soup. So if you have to reheat, you might actually have to add a little bit of beef broth or chicken broth, whatever you're using, um, in order to make up for the fluid that the pasta is going to suck up. And that's why you don't want to use more than that cup that's recommended. So let's look. <sighs> Looks like it's almost done already. The bread, I mean. Let's see. Yep, here we go. It's nice and melted. And let me turn this off. And you could actually do it longer. I just know my um, my smoke alarm is going to go off if I let it go too long and it starts to um, smoke. So I don't want to do that to you guys while I'm live. <laughs> um, but normally, if it was just me at home, I'd probably let it go just a little bit longer. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is wine. If you want to have this with some wine, um, Sean and I discussed it, and I think our first recommendation is a Virginia Dare Pinot. This is a Sonoma Pinot. Um, this is a Francis Ford Coppola family winery. Um, it's an excellent Pinot. If you haven't had, if you've had the Oregon Pinot, this is just as good. The other thing that you could have with it is another red, and this is from uh, Klein Family Wineries, and this is Medevre. This is actually um, a lot of the, the grapes are here in Contra Costa County. So this is another um, red wine that you could have with this. So once this starts boiling, I'm going to put my pasta in, going to let it cook another eight minutes, and then I'm, I can serve it. I'll post a picture of it when it's done, because I don't think you guys want to wait for this to go. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.